Nashville Predators have one game left before the All-Star break. A showdown with the LA Kings tonight. Is this a do-or-die game for the Preds? Plus, it's Ann's favorite topic, UC Soros trade talk. A national writer thinks it might actually happen at the deadline. We'll dive into that on today's Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day every single day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, want to start out with a special shout out to our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everydayers who tune into every single show. We love you guys and we appreciate the support you give us week in and week out. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at the Hockey News. On today's episode, the UC Soros trade talk, it's not going away, folks. Uh, And a couple of national writers think it might actually happen sooner than we thought. Is this maybe finally the right time to pull a trigger on the trade? especially with a certain goaltender in Milwaukee leading the Admirals to 11 straight wins. Uh, That's a topic of conversation that we will have coming up in just a second. But first, Preds battling the LA Kings tonight uh, at Bridgestone Arena. It is, for those of you going to the game, a heads up, a earlier puck drop than usual. It is a sixth 30 yes. central puck drop. The game's on national TV. So the viewing audience wants to, you know, get on with their night a little bit sooner. So it's a 6:30 puck drop. Um, and this is an LA Kings team that is not doing so hot right now. This is also a Nashville Predators team that is not doing <laughs> so hot right now. Uh, yeah. Is it safe to say that this is sort of a do or die game to get back on track before the all-star break for both teams? I do think that this game has a lot of a must win element to it. Um, you've got the LA Kings who I think going into the season, the expectation was these are going to be guys who are going to be battling with the top teams in the Pacific. They have only won two games in January. They, they, beat Carolina and they beat the New York Rangers. They have gotten some points in overtime and shootout games. You know, they've come away with a point here and there, but this is a team that really is struggling to get wins. They are what two, five and three in their last 10 games and and they're struggling to get back on track. It's, it's definitely a tough situation for the LA Kings right now. And look, the Nashville predators, this is not a picnic right now for the predators either where we thought maybe in November, December, they were starting to gain some traction. We were starting to do that one step forward that Barry Trotz had talked about in the reset. Things are a little shaky now, and it feels like maybe we're 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 taking a couple steps back and trying to figure out how to get some of these younger players scoring, how to get the top line scoring again. You know, it's This is this is a game where you've got two teams uh, that are tied. They're still tied with the St. Louis Blues, who lost last night. Thank you to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Hey, (laughs) what? what, Speaking of weird (laughs) end results, speaking of weird results. Hey, Columbus, we see you. Um, So tonight, you know, no, it's not a playoff game, but it has the feel of that. These are two teams that they need a win. They need a win and they need a win going into this all star break. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just for, you know, playoff picture is one thing, but I think it's just for confidence. Oh, gosh. At yeah. this point, look, you had a team that, you know, a month ago, you could maybe make an argument for being the best team in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously the Kings have fallen off, but it's still, you know, a pretty good hockey team that the Nashville Predators. Uh, are going to wind up going against tonight. So look, it's, you want it just for confidence and you got kind of embarrassed in your last couple of games. You know, you got hit in the mouth 
uh, yeah. against the Ottawa Senators, having a big lead and then wind up blowing it. Uh, you have some guys on the team, like honestly, like the top line for the Nashville Predators, guys like Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Gustav Nyquist, who got off to such hot starts, who have really kind of started to hit a brick wall a little yeah. bit in the couple of weeks. You, we've talked about you know, sort of our confusion over maybe some of the younger people and depth guys on the team. Um, You know, so it's, there's a lot of people that I think need something positive out of this game. If nothing, you know, if nothing else, but just to kind of give them something positive to chew on while they while they're all in Bermuda or Bora Bora or wherever everybody is <laughs> wherever going, they for, go. yeah, wherever everybody is going for the All Star break this year. Yeah, but you um, and I, by the way, everyone, we're not going, so we'll be right no. here. Nobody invited us. No, uh, Philip Forsberg will be in Toronto. Uh, we're not yeah. going there either. Um, and what's when you, when you look at this matchup? What's a key for you for tonight's game? Yeah, I think one of the things that the Predators really need to do against the Kings is they need to score off the rush. If you look at some of the Kings losses recently, even to teams like, and I say this with love in my heart, Buffalo, the San Jose Sharks, those are two teams that scored off the rush kind of a lot. Yeah. against um against the kings so i think you know if you can play that game here is the problem the predators have generated those kind of chances those two-on-one chances they've generated some breakaways they haven't had players finish those so that i think is going to be really important let's score off the rush let's play a faster a north south game but for the love of all that is good and holy in the world of the hockey gods please finish those chances yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm going to give you like a weird X factor for tonight's game Ooh, I love uh, that. is Cole Smith, because that's somebody when you describe chances off the rush, that's like in Cole Smith's wheelhouse. Come like, on. That's kind of his game is that counterattack. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's he's if he can finish some of those chances like that's that could be, you know, sort of a game changing thing for yeah. Nashville Predators. Like if he can able if he's able to kind of get one of those. Um, and on net, you know, Tomasino, that line also, um, I can't figure out a reason why Tomasino would be scratched again. We'll um, let you know what we see at morning skate. <laughs> do what? I will let you know what we see at morning skate. Yes. Mm. Uh, he, I mean, I thought he was the best player on the ice um, in that Ottawa game. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's he's another person that kind of, you know, plays on the counterattack really well and utilizes his speed. And, uh, you know, we've we've seen him uh, with Cole Smith at times. So, yeah, that's another person I'm kind of watching out for. But, you know, yeah. it, it goes back to something that we talked about um, earlier and is we just kind of want to see a big game from the people that we're used to seeing big games from. Right. Uh, Philip Forsberg, who was on pace for a career best season, um, has kind of gone cold and his you know points per game has kind of fallen back. Like he's now 50 points in 50 games, which is still great, but uh, not quite the near 100 point pace he was at, you know, when when the right. season was kind of getting it towards the halfway point. Um, you know, Gustav Nyquist, of course, has, has gotten hot, but I would like to see more from Ryan O'Reilly. Um, you know, I thought Roman Yossi has really started to turn the corner um, offensively, you know, six points in his last five games, including two assists against Ottawa. I would like to see a big game for him. It's just one of those games, Anne, where, you know, you really want to see sort of the, you know, the big guns for the Nashville yes. Predators step up and have big nights. And that, that includes another big performance from UC Saros, assuming he's starting. Yep. And I do think tonight is also going to be about quantity and not just quality, which is not something that I always say about hockey. But you're looking at an L.A. Kings team and they have the fourth most shots this so far this season in the league. This is a team that puts a lot of shots up. Nashville really needs to focus on possessing the puck, but they have got to put shots on goal. You know, we've talked about it. It was a comment that Andrew Brunette made recently about like, we're getting too cute in the offensive zone. Stop being cute in the offensive zone. Put the puck 
on net. This is going to be a little bit about quantity. If you've got Cam Talbot in net, if you have David Riddick in net, you have got to put shots on net. Let, let's let's just see how many garbage goals we can get because guess what? They count as much. There are no style points in hockey, which is mistake yeah. because we've got some stylish fellas, but no style points in hockey. So shots on goal. The Predators have got to get a lot of shots on net tonight. Yeah. One more intriguing storyline. Uh, Alexander Carrier was, of course, banged up in the last game. Um, if he can't go tonight, that means it's probably Tyson Berry. Uh, and it would be Tyson Berry's, as you pointed out, and 800, 800 career game, career game. Uh, which might lead to the most awkward <laughs> anniversary game celebration. It's um, like bringing a cake into the worst. And I don't, I shouldn't say that. That sounds terrible about Tyson Berry because they really love him in the locker room and stuff. But it's just such an awkward <laughs> situation. How, you know, hey, it's finally your 800th, even though we've healthy scratched you for 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be like um, Harry Potter getting Christmas gifts from the Dursleys. We're like, <laughs> we're like, I, I like Barry yeah. Trotz is just gonna give Tyson Barry like an embroidered pair of Barry Trotz's old socks <laughs> or something like that. Um, or like you know, yeah. as like a can of tuna fish or something like that. Yeah. Like it's yeah. something like a, like a gift that's still in the Walgreens bag right. when they hand it to him. Yes, um, with the receipt in there, and yeah, when Paul McCann announces it, people are gonna go, who? I'm sorry, who's 800th game? Because, gosh, we just haven't seen much of Tyson recently. Yeah. So. There, there's going to be booing coming from Andrew Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> or booing coming from the front end box. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be a whole thing, y'all. Yeah, it's and just, and so. again, hey, the 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 Predators in the locker room love Tyson. They Barry, do so, love Tyson yeah, Barry, if, I will tell he, you. If, if he winds up playing uh, tonight, uh, congrats to him. Congrats uh, well, to him. That's a great milestone. So absolutely. Um, you know what else is intriguing about this LA Kings matchup, Anne? What's that? The Kings could yeah. be one of the teams in search of a goaltender. The Nashville Predators have a pretty good one historically in UC Soros. That is one of the teams, or the Kings were one of the teams mentioned in a new article from Daily Faceoff talking about the Predators may be able to pull the trigger on a UC Soros trade sooner than we think. We'll talk about that coming up in just one second. First, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. We have a lot of fun here uh, talking about hockey and the Nashville Predators. But let's face it, sometimes we use sports as an escape for real life. And there is a real life situation going on in terms of medication. Pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. This is according to the FDA. Uh, we don't want you guys to get left out in the cold uh, if you need life-saving medication. And thankfully... Jace Medical has us all covered. They have something called the Jace Case. It's a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses. Things like respiratory illnesses, sinusitis, skin infections, UTIs, and anything that could happen to any one of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. And of course, we want to wish everybody happy Super Bowl coming up. We know that it is going to be the Chiefs versus the 49ers. I'm actually going to pull for the 49ers. Love me some Taylor Swift, though. That's not why I'm not pulling for the Chiefs. You're but going to get canceled, Ann. What I'm no, I I don't care. Love Taylor Swift, but love the 49ers. Of course, Philip Forsberg loves George Kittle, so we're pulling for for that. And also, one of the 49ers backups played at my son's high school. So go 49ers! But if you are looking to celebrate Super Bowl Sunday, there is no better way to do it than with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end this NFL season with a W, or maybe two or three. 
So not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets on everything from which players will score a touchdown, how many yards, how many receiving yards, how many points will be scored, and so much more. And new customers, if you join today, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So go and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. It is an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Ann, let's talk about your thing that you were most excited to talk about today. The UC Soros trade rumor machine is back up and running. Uh, it's been this way all season. Right. It's we've we've talked about this quite a lot at this point. It's nothing new. Yeah. But what is new is that apparently the Nashville Predators may be in a position to pull a trigger more so than chance. Uh, Barry Trotz, uh, of course, has told Frank Cervelli, nope, not happening. Um, it's, you know, there, there's nothing that we're is going to get us to trade UC yeah. Staros. But uh, according to the Daily Faceoffs, Matt Larkin, it might be time to pull the trigger. And Frank Cervelli on the podcast yesterday said, yeah, Okay, we could could maybe see that happening. Teams are asking about it. So according to the article, the article listed um, four uh, potential trade destinations uh, for Saros. We'll get into that in a second. But first, Anne, is it time to maybe consider trading UC Saros, especially with, as Frank Saravelli pointed out, Yaroslav Askarov doing as well as he's doing with the ads right now? Yeah. And here's what's real. Askarov is doing phenomenally in the AHL. He has the fifth best save percentage in the entire AHL league. Uh, Troy Grosnick, the backup, 11th best in the AHL. So goaltending in Milwaukee really has been a factor in them winning 11 straight. They won their 11th straight last night. So you do have to kind of factor in like you do have Yaroslav sitting in Milwaukee playing really, really well. Is he ready? I, you know, it's so tricky because I don't know even what 50 games into the season. I still don't know that we are 100 percent sure of what the Nashville Predators have to know what is this, you know, who are these players going to be two seasons from now? I'm not sure we're any clearer on players like Luke Evangelista, Tommy Novak. I think we're all very confused about how the organization looks at players like Phil Tomasino. And I think it matters what the vision is for those guys and for young defensemen who may come up like Stasny, Mark Dalgaizo. And I think that's going to factor into what do you do with UC Sorrels. So I feel like the water is still very, very muddy when it, when it comes to like what do the Nashville Predators have in hand and what do they need to continue to develop? I would be, I will say this, I would be less surprised today if they traded Soros than I would have been at the beginning of the season. I would be less surprised. So some of that, again, goes back to how well Yaroslav Askarov is doing. Some of that has to do with the fact that like, we don't, we still don't know a lot about the Nashville Predators yet. To me, the UC Soros trade happens in two situations. Okay. Um, one is that if you are 100% sure Askarov is your guy and he is ready to be your guy, you can't put him in a situation in which he's, you know, he's here and he's struggling and, you know, only right. being a 900 goaltender. Like you can't do that. Like when you bring him up, when you say, okay, you're either one A, one B, or you know, our, our full time starter. Like he's got to be confident. Right. He's got to have time to cook, so yeah. to speak. Yes. Uh, and the other one is if you get a absolutely banger of a deal. Those are the only two ways that that trade happens. Look, UC yeah. Saros is the best player on the Nashville Predators, and when teams around the league trade their best player. It's with the expectation that it's going to be for someone that can conceivably be part of a an integral part 
yes. of a winning team moving forward. Not just somebody who's going to be like a piece on, you know, the third line or whatever like that, or not just, you know, a, a solid good piece. Like you're looking for somebody who's going to be a dynamic score on, on in somewhere in the top six, or you're going to, you know, want a defender that you can conceivably maybe put on your number one pair at yeah. some point. That's the kind of thing you're hoping for. Yes. You can't trade UC Saros for just, you know, a late first pick. Come on. And, you know, with all due respect, somebody like Reed Schaefer, like it, yeah. it can't, it can't be the Matias at trade. Like it has yes. got to be for someone huge. That's the only way these trades happen. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not convinced that it will. So in the article mentioned four teams, the Carolina Hurricanes, the LA Kings, the New Jersey Devils, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Those are the four that um, are, are strongly linked to UC Saros. And in each right. case, um, you know, Matt Lark and Frank Cervelli said it would cost, you know, one of the other teams, like top prospects, like Scott Morrow from Carolina, um, you know, somebody like either Alex Turcott or Brant Clark or Jordan Spence from LA. Um, so, you know, like th those are the kind of people we're thinking of. The question is, Anna, is I'm just doubting whether teams are going to want to right. do that right now. Yes, I agree with you 100%. If you were going to trade UC Soros, a difference maker for the Nashville Predators, the Nashville Predators expect a difference maker right now. And I think you also, on top of that, have to factor in where does Barry Trotz see this team? You, you may come and go, hey, we're going to give you a couple first round picks and a second round pick. You know what? If Barry Trotz says, no, I'm still committed to getting this team back in contention in three seasons, I don't want your first round picks. They're yeah. not going to come to fruition and develop in time to really turn the tide for the Nashville Predators on the timeline that Barry Trotz has. Keeping UC Soros, I think, keeps you closer to that timeline than it would be to trade UC Soros for some great picks and a potential prospect. Because you have to remember in the NHL, Prospect. It's not like the NFL where you see a guy for three years in college, two, you know, two years, four years in college, and they're going to jump right into the pros. There is right. such a bigger gap in the development process when a player is drafted in the NHL to when they are ready for the NHL. Like, I, I really believe that if a deal is going to get done for UC Soros, it is going to involve a right now player. It will have. I, I really believe that Barry Trotz is banking on you. Give us a right now player. Give us a difference maker right now. Yeah. Here is where the Nashville Predators can't trade UC Soros. They can't trade UC Soros because they need to rebuild. That's the one thing they can't do. They cannot trade at UC Soros because it's like, well, we need to tank. Uh, we're tired of finishing in the middle of the pack. Um, we need to trade him so that we can maybe get a higher draft pick uh, so we can maybe ride out the end of the season, get like a top 10 because we're tired of getting, you know, the, the 14th and 15th pick that doesn't amount to anything. Like, you know, we, we need to actually start, you know, maybe trying to be bad. That's where the Nashville Predators can't trade UC Soros. Uh, they can't trade him just to trade him. To be bad like they need to trade him for a purpose and i think that there that's it's coming into play because a lot of people including this article mentioned that yeah, the predators have just been you know racking up 15 and they can't get into the top 10 and they're not able to get a game-changing prospect if you're doing that for that then you know you're you're basically throwing all your money on the roulette table like yes. you're not at you're not strategically building and so that I think is the one warning. Like if you're going to trade UC Soros, don't do it to tank. Do it because you have a plan and you're getting somebody that you see as a big part of the Preds' future. Yeah. Yeah. I have big feels on the number of people who are, are sell off Soros, sell off all the assets. We need to tank to get the number one pick in the draft. I, I have I have big feels.
on, well, on that let, opinion. Let's listen to some of those big feels in, in a second. And also let's talk about the Milwaukee Admirals because you've mentioned they've won 11 straight. Uh, what's gone right in Milwaukee? We'll tackle those two topics coming up in just a second. First, I uh, want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Factor. It is a new year, and let's be honest, if you are anything like me, one of the resolutions that I have going into this year is, look, I want to eat healthier. I want to be healthier. Factor can help with this. You can get started on that resolution with Factor. Factor has ready-to-eat meal deliveries, and they take the stress out of all that meal planning. They set you up for success in the new year. You can skip the long lines at the end of the day at the grocery store. You can skip all that prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, you can get chef created dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. They have over 35 meals to choose from every week, including options like keto. They have calorie smart. They have vegan and veggie and more. Plus they have over 55 weekly add-ons. So you're going to have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart that resolution. Of course, we all know that snacks and breakfasts can be tricky when you're trying to change your eating habits. Factor offers options like breakfast. They have smoothies, juices, snacks. They have all of those options to keep you going no matter what happens in your crazy schedule day. And when things get hectic, Factor is flexible. You can change your order up any week with plans from four to 18 meals per week, or you can always pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. So head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and you can use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's right. It's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and you're going to get 50% off. All right, Anne, so I know that you, um, you know, we were talking about the idea of tanking, and I know you had um, <laughs> some thoughts uh, on this. Uh, what do you think about the the influx of people saying the Predators just need to be bad right now for, for draft picks, to, to rack up prospects, to sell off everything? I have such a strong opposition to this whole idea. And like you said, this is something that Matt Larkin mentioned in his article. He said, if Nashville ever wants to be something more than the poster child for mid, it has to consider bottoming out and picking higher in the draft. Let me tell you why that won't work. Because the Nashville Predators already have six, seven first round picks in Milwaukee, in the pipeline, in the OHL that they have committed to investing in. You cannot sell off UC Soros <clears throat> for picks. You are not going to want to move Roman Yossi, Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, Gus Nyquist, um, Colton Sissons. You have just... Even if you want them to stink, you have too much talent on the Nashville Predators roster right now to A, move, and to B, to suck that bad. It's just not practical, okay? And you've already committed to investing in these young players. If you sell off all of these veterans and say, we're going to bottom out, you can't do it. You already have Luke Evangelista. You already have Yaroslav Askarov. You have Joachim Kimmel. You have Matthew Wood. You can't do it. You're already got some of these guys that you're bringing into the NHL to develop. You can't do it. I, I, and, and I also think the idea that you want to tank so that you can get that number one first round pick that's going to change your franchise's life. I get why people think that when you look at the first round picks that have gone like Nathan McKinnon. Oh, yeah. Yep. He could change a franchise. You know, Connor McDavid. Yep. Get that. He can change a franchise. But guess how many number one overall picks there are in a draft? There's one. There's one. Yeah. 31 other teams don't get the guy. And very seldom are you going to have a draft like you had last year where you can get Adam Fantilli at two or three and be like, it's Christmas. So stop with this idea that the way that the only way to build a contending team, the only way is you got to tank, you got to erase everything off the books and you got to rebuild it. I just don't believe that's true. And at this point, you can't do it. You can't yeah. do it. let it go. It can't happen. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it, y'all. <laughs> 100%. Um, and here's another idea. The future is looking bright in Milwaukee. 
Uh, the Milwaukee Admirals have won 11 straight games. Uh, last night, uh, Liam Foodie, who Anna, I completely <laughs> forgot was in the Preds organization. Yeah, clear uh, record, y'all. <laughs> yeah, uh, it scored his first professional hat trick at any level. Uh, and uh, they beat the San Diego Goals four to three. Uh, last night, they've won 10 straight in Milwaukee. Um, so not just 11 straight overall, but 10 straight in Milwaukee. Uh, they're first place in the division, yeah. uh, second in the entire league. Um, and what, what has been sort of the biggest X factor in Milwaukee right now? There are, there's a couple of things that I think are in play in Milwaukee. First of all, I think you have to give a shout out to Carl Taylor, who every single season does more and more to make you say some NHL team is going to get really lucky when Carl Taylor becomes a coach in the NHL. This is somebody who is absolutely crafty and genius at developing talent, figuring out how to pull something out of these players, figuring out what needs refined around them and doing it well. Like that entire coaching staff and organization in Milwaukee really does a great job. I do think you really also have to shout out goaltending. And I'm not just talking about Yaroslav Skarov, who is, again, having a phenomenal season, fifth best save percentage in the entire NHL. But Troy Grosnick, is back with the Milwaukee Admirals. The the elder statesman will call him in hockey years. And Troy Grosnick is having a phenomenal season as well. So you can put either one of your goaltenders in there and you know you are going to get a great performance from both of them. So I think that takes the pressure off of Askarov from a super heavy workload. Uh, I think that Grosnick has been really great for him. But you also have players like Igor Afanasiev playing probably the best hockey that he has played. You've got a healthy yeah. York and Kamel back in. The other player who has knocked my socks off is Zachary LaRue. Yes. This is his first season in the AHL. Like this is a jump for him. This is one of those transition seasons where you see, hey, is this young player ready for the next level? My friends, Zachary LaRue has looked phenomenal in the AHL. Now I know, you know, there's some things we want to refine about, you know, his style of play. He's he's sure. a, he's a little chippy and edgy, but you know, he's going to mature, you know, out of that. But he has looked phenomenal. You know, you've got Fedor Svechkov looking great. There's just a lot of good things going. And hey, here's what's interesting. Last season, the Admirals made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. They were so close to making it to the Calder Cup Finals. This is a, a, a different looking team. And they are still playing so well. You know, you've got different backup goaltender. The captain is gone. You've got a lot of new guys coming in with their first AHL season. Milwaukee, if you all are not watching the Milwaukee Admirals, you are missing out on some phenomenally exciting hockey. Yeah, there's a lot of people in Milwaukee that it feels like are doing better than you would have expected them to. Yes. Um, you know, Zach Lee LaRue. A pleasant surprise, I think, for yes. a lot of people. Even though he was a first-round pick, I think a lot of people were expecting him, um, you know, more of a Jordan Tutu kind of than a than you know a, a two-way forward. And and I think he's sort of proven he's more than just sort of that spicy guy. Yes, uh, that he's actually got a pretty well-rounded NHL game. I, I don't think it's far-fetched to say he might have the most NHL-ready game out of any of the Preds' mm -hmm. prospects so yeah. far because he does a lot of things 200 feet so well uh yeah. fedor Svechkov. a lot of people just forgot about fedor Svechkov, but the yeah. you know the other first round pick yeah in that mix um you talked about afanasiev we sort of wondered if, if maybe the preds were souring him or souring on him a little bit because he didn't look the best in andrew Burnett's system but he's actually wound up having his best professional season so there's these pleasant surprises and, uh, you know, Mark Jankowski, Love one of the, the AHL's top scorers right now. Uh, yep. Gurianov, kind of tired of seeing him in Nashville, but in Milwaukee, you know, it, it was, right. he was one of the Admiral's best players. So it, I think it's, you know, when you saw the Admirals and you're thinking, oh, yeah, it's Askarov, it's Joachim Kamel doing gangbusters. Um, you know, you're, you're it's it's a big contingent of players that I think have been pleasant surprises for the Admirals this year. 
Yeah. And I think it's also been a really great place. We've talked a lot. You know that Nick and I are huge fans of Spencer Stasny. Also, yeah. man of Mark Del Geisel. These are two players I think you're going to see in Nashville. They are continuing to elevate their game in Milwaukee, which is a credit, again, to Carl Taylor and that staff that these guys who are so NHL ready, I mean, they're right there, are still continuing to get better. Mark Del Geiso had a goal in last night's win that was so beautiful, it would make your mama cry. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. So they're just continuing to improve their games there. They're not just waiting things out in Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, the Admirals play again on Friday. Uh, tonight, of course, the Nashville Predators take on the LA Kings. Again, 6.30 Central puck drop. Uh, so you will want to tune in a little bit earlier to see the Preds uh, on home ice. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with recap from Preds and Kings. Stay tuned.